Ooh. Mother's Day. 2022. 20, Sunday, May 8th. Ooh. I'm going to be a little bit long-winded today. It's Mother's Day. Beautiful day here in Linden, Alabama. Bright, sunny day. The weather is just so congenial. Well, let me tell you something about this visit I had at 4 a.m. in the morning a few nights ago. I had a visit with Vance Havner. The correct spelling of his last name is H-A-V-N-E-R. First name, Vance. Thanks to YouTube, YouTube snuck this in on me. <laughs> I'm laying up in bed, 4 a.m., phone running. I go to sleep listening to my, one of my sermons on YouTube. And with the phone being plugged up, charger on, it didn't cut off automatically. So I was awakened by the voice of Vance Havner, a man that preached for more than 60 years. He started preaching when he was 13 or 14 years old. The message that I heard was his 75th birthday message, 75 years old. Vance cracked me up. He talked about how Christians can have everything on one hand and have nothing on the other at the same time. <laughs> I'm still trying to uh, digest that. But I have a good little message here to deliver today. on this Mother's Day, carefully crafted, not a stove-bought message, and I tried to weave into this message subtleties that every soul need to digest, almost parabolic in nature, as Jesus taught in parables, but I'm going to put this message forward text Luke 12 15 which says and he said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for or because a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth Luke 12 and 15. I'm going to take the long way around today. And, oh yeah, time is looking good. Only three minutes gone. Three minutes and 55 seconds to be exact. But, I'm going to take the long way around. Because, The gospel has to flow through the preacher's personality. And I'm going to roll back the curtain a little bit today and give you a peep at my personality. On July 1st, 1975, I was hobnobbing around Washington, D.C. Three or four years before I started preaching. And I stumbled upon a book uh, entitled How to Be Rich by J. Paul Getty. This message today is Abundance Part 3. 
But this is not a message about getting rich. I could easily craft, write, sermon, marry in the Bible with wealth gaining principles and submit them to you. But I won't do I will not do that. I'm told that Penelope Kingston was J. Paul Giddy's ghostwriter. But the book was written so well that I got a thrill just reading it. The stress and emphasis of that book was not how to get rich, but how to be rich. Big difference. Abundance, part three. Beware covetousness uh, for or because a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. A few verses earlier, man asked Jesus, said, Jesus, talk to my brother and get him to share the inheritance with me possessions, abundance. But a few verses later, Jesus spoke the words of our text. He did so as he journeyed through Samaria and Perea. Uh, Luke 12 and 1 tells us that an innumerable multitude of people had gathered. Jesus was there. Let me step off the sidelines and say this. Papa Floyd, old preacher, going on to be with the Lord now, but he was a dean and teacher of the ministerial staff, about 12 preachers who were members of the Little Zion Baptist Church of Compton, California. Papa Floyd told me about how they used to how they went to kill a preacher one night. A bunch of preachers got together and he said, we, Langston, we went down there to kill him. I had never heard that before. <laughs> I'm just a little young preacher. But it's being done <laughs> professionally. They'll gang up and kill you. And they will forget Spotty Boy. Uh, that white German shepherd dog that my mother gave to me. The stray dogs and street dogs whew, came, on, came upon him one night and killed him. Whew, they were jealous of him. Pretty white German shepherd. I got pictures of me in that white German shepherd. And uh, I posted them on social media, Facebook. But Papa Floyd told me about, told us about the time they went to kill a preacher, gang up on him, keep him from getting to church. But what I really want to say about what Papa Floyd taught us was that he said, boys, when you get up there and start preaching, always tell the people who is talking and tell the people who he was talking to. Tell the people what he said. Tell the people where he was when he said it. So as I prepared this message, I followed Papa Floyd's uh, instruction, and I want to submit to you uh, this, that there are three salient points in this 15th verse of the Gospel of St. Luke. The first salient point is a warning about covetousness. The second point is the contents, the real contents of a man's life. 
from woman's life too. But the real contents of life. Fourth point, the easy one, at possessions. Now, I will cover these three points a little bit, best I can. But my friends, I contend that any and every warning of Jesus, the warnings of Jesus are timeless. That is, covetousness was a problem for mankind when Jesus walked among men. And it's still a problem for us all today. Human behavior has not changed with time. But I'll show you what I found in the dictionary about the word covetous. Bless the soul of my high school English teacher, Miss Mary B. Evans. Covetous is an adjective. And it means being excessively desirous. That would covetous mean being excessively desirous. Oh. Uh, Greedy. The synonym for covetous is envious. Don't let me deal with anonyms and synonyms, but I did consult uh, high school Warner English grammar or a uh, composition book. And let me say to my good friend, Suzanne Crab, Dr. Suzanne Crabtree Arnold, clinical psychologist, holding her PhD uh, from one of the top 10 universities in the country. Say to Suzanne, my grandma Moses, he's an artist, mind doctor, but I want to say to Suzanne, I consulted my English, high school English or, uh, grammar, the composition book. I also went to my freshman college or, uh, English composition book, still on the bookshelf, entitled Writing with a Purpose. I tell Billy, Billy Langston Davis, I call a few days because these people pay attention to me. Uh, but the academic discipline, English composition, requires a considerable amount of attention as I prepare my messages. Both Billy and Suzanne have read one chapter in my autobiography, my life story. They have 15 or 20 pages. And I want them to get a good look. I want y'all to get a good look at what Jesus had to say. This is not about or uh, abundant wealth. This is about spiritual abundance. Covetous means excessively desirous of something greedy, envious, covetousness. Well, Reverend, you might say, is that all the dictionary said? No. The word covet, C-O-V-E-T, is there also. Covet is a verb. 
One of English grammar tell me that it's a transitive verb. <clears throat> Powerful verb. Uh, covet, covet is there along with covetous. Covet means to desire eagerly, long for, especially to desire something that belongs to somebody else or to another. It also means to feel desire. Covet to be, to covet means to feel desire, long or lust for something. The synonym for covet is desire. Thank you, Suzanne, for giving me that compliment, telling me that I'm a great writer. <laughs> I do the best I can with what I have to work with. But I believe that Jesus warns us about this problem because of its corrosive nature, covetousness. It can get progressively worse with time, and it can potentially disfigure your well-developed personality. So today, I reiterate, today, I reiterate the warning given by Jesus more than 2,000 years ago. Whew. Beware. Of covetous, covetousness, rather. And let me just focus on what man's life consists of. Point number two in our text, where Jesus says, A man's life consisted not. Whew, in what he possesses. We live in an age, and it just didn't start, but from time immemorial, people fought wars, <sighs> either because of land or money. Let me slip this in there. There was a war that was fought mythically. Homer told us about it. It was that Trojan War. They weren't fighting about land. That fight didn't start about land. Didn't start about money. Watch this. Uh, this is going to sail over the heads of some of you all. But there was a woman named Helen Helen of Troy. And she was at the root of that war. When it come down to interpersonal crisis and conflicts, you'd look deep enough, you might find a woman <laughs> at the root of that war. Many people, let me move on, have unscriptural ideas about life. What a man, what a person's life consists of. But I want to submit to you this notion that there is a larger life that belongs to the people of God. A larger life. I want to describe that to you. First, when you want to understand the larger life, you'll find first that there is an overflowing cup in Psalms 20. 
3 and 5. It says there, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. Whew, runneth over. The cup of abundance. An overflowing cup. That's the larger life man's life consists of. This larger life in God also consists of righteousness. As promised, as stated by Jesus in Matthew 5 and 6, where the Master says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Abundance, the larger life. I got a few more minutes. Let me slip this in on you. I'm going to push this in the back door. That larger life that is expressed in Malachi 3 and 10. Whew. I'm not going to give you the whole pill because you might not be able to swallow it. Just give you a little bit of Malachi 3 and 10 where it says, I will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Isn't that abundance? My friend, I'm going to repeat that part of our text that says a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. But let me bottom line, let me bottom line this larger life with three verses found in the book of Ephesians. And then I'm going to get on out of here. But the bottom line is vital. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 17, we stumble upon this larger life, abundant life. It says, now I have it written down, but I want to read it from Holy Writ. It says, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, comma, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length, depth, height, full colon. Verse 19, and to know the love of Christ with passes knowledge mm, that ye may that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. At bottom line on a larger life. My friend. I've been there, done that. I'm going to close this message on out by making this point. The last salient point in the text had to do with possessions. Whew possessions possessions if you my friend don't observe the warning given by Jesus your possessions will possess you the alternative to having your possessions to possess you is to have abundance in Jesus Christ. 
not a fat portfolio, not a healthy bank account, but abundance in Jesus Christ. Will you take it to God in prayer today? And receive the abundant life, the fullness of God. That includes the blessing that you don't have room for. That includes the overflowing cup. Let me tell you about possessions in the form of a story that's often repeated from pulpits around the world about a man who, while escaping a sinking ship, gathered up his gold bars and tied them around his waist before jumping off the ship. His possessions possessed him. Carried him down. Will you tell God if you know that you're a sinner? Will you tell him that you believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive you of your sins? Will you tell him that you're sorry for all of your sins? Take it on term in prayer. Tell him you th thank him for the new life that you can have in Jesus Christ. Mm. Commit yourself to follow him from this uh, Mother's Day of 2020. Uh, evermore. You will experience spiritual abundance which takes precedent over material, physical abundance. In Jesus, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, now unto him that is able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, he's able to do it with exceeding great joy. Now unto him, Jesus, the only wise God, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Mother's Day message, New, New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church of London, Alabama, on top of the 42 floor joists, under the span of the 42 rafters, representing the 42 generations through which Christ came. God bless you. Till we meet again, my friend. Be rich. Goodbye.